Hi, this is Tom. Today we're going to explain how a cascading timer works. In our previous videos, we created a sample timer, a flash on off timer, and then a cascading timer. Now these are actually all based off the same concept. Now, if you missed those, just check out the link at the end of the video. But here is what we did is we started out with this sample rate timer. And we see that while it looks like it is just erratically sending out numbers, when we tie the sample rate done to a counter, we see that it is counting up very repeatedly once a second. And our preset is 1000. Then we created this flash on, flash off right here. And we see that pretty much our flash on.dn or a flash off enable is flashing on and off at about a half a second rate. And we used it to signal our green light. And then in the last video, we made these cascading timers where we have cascade one, two, three, and our yellow light comes on for about a half a second, red light for a second, and then our blue light for two seconds. Now let's talk about how this works because I find a lot of people manage to get a timer to work and then you find out later they're just so thankful that they managed to get it to work because they have no clue how it actually does anything. So let's look at this first one right here. If we have sample rate and this is a timer, it's a TON and we have a preset of a thousand. Now the instruction preceding it is an examine off, which if you've watched many of our videos, you know that means go look for a zero. Where at? In sample rate dot DN. So our first thing we have to understand is when is sample rate dot DN a zero and when is it a one? A sample rate dot DN is gonna be a one when the instructions preceding it are true and the accumulated value is greater than or equal to the preset. So we're looking for a zero here. So if it's not done, our timer is going to be true. And then the moment that the accumulated value is greater than or equal to a thousand, it is going to set the done bet. So understand that when this rung started scanning, the done bet was false. And in that instance, then it set the done bit to a one. So that means for this single scan, this go look for a one is going to be true. Now it comes around another time. I mean, the very next scan, a few microseconds later, and this is looking for a zero. But now our sample rate dot DN is a one. So this is going to be false. And a false TON writes a zero to everything but the preset, which includes the done bit. And then it's gonna come here. This is gonna be a zero now. And it comes around next time. And this is going to look for a zero. It has one, it's gonna be true again. So every thousand milliseconds, this done bit is gonna be true for one single scan. And then it's gonna start over. Now, as long as we keep this TON here from becoming false, we can do other things after that sample rate is done. And that's what we're doing with the flash on, flash off here. So let's think about this one. So we're looking for the flash off.dn to be a zero, or mainly this flash off accumulated to be less than 500. If it is, then this TON here is gonna be true, our flash on TON. The next one is looking for the flash on DN bit to be a one. So that's not going to happen until this thing times up to a half a second. And this will be true. And then it's going to start timing this flash off. Now, once this hits 500, it's going to make the dumb bit a one. This is looking for a zero. That's going to go false. So the moment that goes false, it's going to write a zero to everything but the preset value of the flash on, including this done bit right here. So then this was looking for a one. It has a zero. It goes false. And that's going to write a zero to everything except the preset and the flash off, including the flash on dot DN, which is going to make this true again. And so these two rungs are going to sit there and just alternate back and forth in a half a second increment. So now what we can do 
is we can actually squeeze more stuff in between these two. And you could have as many as you want down here. Mainly, if we notice I made this cascade 3.dn, which is our last timer. So let's ignore this one for a second because I think the other part's really easy. Cascade 1 is going to be true. And once it is done, or its accumulated value is a half a second, then this is going to be true. And it's going to start timing cascade 2. And then once it's done, cascade 2 is going to start cascade 3. Now, the only thing that people get stumped up on is, okay, how did this thing reset and start over? Let's just pay attention to this part right here. Is okay, first thing is if cascade 3 done is a zero, or mainly this timer is not done, it's going to start the process. And we understand, I think, how to drive it through, but let's pay attention to this part. So when our accumulated value reaches 2000 on cascade 3, it's going to write a 1 to cascade 3's done bit. This is looking for a 0 in cascade 3's done bit. So once it is a 1, this goes false. And a false TON writes a 0 to everything but its preset value, which includes the done bit that we're using right here. So now this is a 0. It's going to be false. It's going to write a 0 to everything to the preset of cascade 2, including the done bit that is used for cascade 3. So this goes false. It's going to write a zero to everything but the preset, which includes that done bit, which means now this done bit is a zero again. And this one becomes true and it repeats the process. This is one of those that's really difficult to explain in a video. So put this in your PLC and study on it. Learn more about timers here. Till next time.